California. Its very name evokes the idea of a promised land. But the Golden State has always paid a price for its prime location. Raging wildfires, drought, and giant waves that batter its coast. Of all the natural disasters that plague California, the deadliest and least understood are earthquakes. The threat of the big one will always pose a daunting challenge for the state's engineers. It's not like these hurricanes where you can line up and prepare. I guess the bright side is we're kind of competing against time. The longer this big earthquake uh, takes to occur, the better prepared we're, we're getting. The most painful lessons have taken place at the vulnerable connecting points of California's gigantic circulatory system. Freeway bridges. One particularly tragic incident sent shockwaves through the engineering community. The collapse of the Cypress Viaduct structure in Oakland during the 7.1 Loma Prieta earthquake on October 17, 1989. The quake lasted 12 seconds. And although the epicenter was 50 miles to the south, the worst structural failure and greatest loss of life would occur here when a one and a quarter mile upper deck section of the 880 freeway pancaked onto the lower deck. 42 people died, crushed in their cars. The detached, unstable structure made rescue efforts difficult and dangerous. It was a progressive collapse. A failure occurs in some localized area and because of that failure, the loads then uh, are exceptionally high as they're transmitted to other parts of the structure. The immediate cause of the disaster was the failure of certain support columns. The intense horizontal movement of the earthquake caused the columns to shear outward, leaving the upper roadway no place to go but straight down. The top part of the roadway had relatively small columns and there were deficiencies right where the columns from the upper level uh, sat on or essentially met the roadway at the top of the first level. The column failure demonstrated an especially cruel quirk of earthquake behavior. Most structures are designed to resist vertical loads. When you have the earthquake, you're applying lateral loads. And so for a good earthquake design, you must not only design the structure to take its weight, but you must design the structure to take these lateral loads that would tend to push it over. When the Cypress Viaduct was completed in 1957, it was the state's first double-decked freeway bridge. Engineers thought they had built in sufficient redundancy by designing it with two sets of columns instead of one. But they didn't count on the dramatic increase of destructive force caused by the ground itself, a phenomenon known as soft soil amplification. The Cypress structure is located fairly close to the San Francisco Bay and the soils underneath it tend to be soft soils. They call it bay mud. And at the Cypress structure, there's the ground accelerations, which might have been 0.05 G, are amplified. So by the time you hit the foundation of the Cypress structure, there may be 0.25 G, or a five-fold amplification. G measures the rate of ground acceleration as a percentage of the Earth's gravity. The Cypress was built to withstand only 0.06 g. This flaw stems from the fact that the Cypress, like many of California's freeway bridges, was built during a 30-year lull of major earthquake activity. There simply hadn't been enough big quakes to learn from. Fast forward to 1994. The California Department of Transportation, or Caltrans, began building a new, meticulously engineered Cypress Viaduct in the shadow of its former self. But just as work was beginning in Oakland, the 6.6 .6 Northridge earthquake struck 400 miles to the south in Los Angeles, where eight freeway bridges collapsed, some shearing in half, others simply falling down. Only the earthquake's timing, it struck at 4.30 a.m., kept freeway fatalities low. The Northridge quake brought into sharp relief the urgency of fixing California's freeways. Back in Oakland, Caltrans engineers and contractors, once again armed with hard-won knowledge, continued their work. The new Cypress structure would be an engineering achievement. It would be marked by advanced use of a fairly new concept in freeway design, flexibility or ductility. One of the essential features of ductility is that if you exceed 
the strength of the structure, it doesn't fail. It can deform, but it doesn't collapse. And this is the concept which is now being put into the design of modern freeway structures. The bend but don't break concept was realized dramatically in heavily reinforced cast and steel shell, concrete piles, sunk as deep as 90 feet into the bay mud, and in vastly improved connections where the columns join the roadway. The new Cypress Viaduct has been designed to withstand 1.8 G of peak horizontal force, or 30 times greater than its original strength. It's a model for the future of California's 12,000 miles of freeway and the type of extreme engineering needed for those who live in the seismic hot zone. There are many, many things that have been done to improve the uh, safety uh, of bridges for earthquakes. And uh, by and large, uh, through a learning process, uh, the bridges are a lot safer in California now uh, than, than probably anywhere else in the world. Uh, that doesn't mean we still don't have more to do. But in the heart of America's coal mining country, a blatant failure of engineering would be necessary to spark reform. 